Hi, I'm John Fredrickson and welcome to the ISTDP Institute. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get better results in therapy by getting an effective focus and developing a better therapeutic alliance. I'll show you what to say and what to do. You might think it's pretty simple to establish a therapeutic alliance, but are you aware that research shows that 50% of patients drop out of therapy prematurely? So think about that. Half of patients drop out before they get the full benefit of therapy. Research also shows that if change doesn't happen within the first seven sessions, it's not likely to happen at all. So why do patients drop out? Why don't they get better in those initial sessions? Mostly because we've not created a relationship for change, what we call the therapeutic alliance. Now, a therapeutic alliance is often misunderstood. It's not simply a kind or supportive relationship. It's a relationship designed to accomplish a task to help the patient change. And to co-create that relationship for change, we need certain specific ingredients. If we don't have them, change doesn't happen. So the first ingredient we need is this. We need to know what internal emotional problem the patient wants to solve. Why? His problem is what motivates him to seek therapy. If we find out what his problem is, and we can show him how the therapy will solve his problem, he'll be motivated to join us in the therapeutic task. After all, patients never come to us saying, gee doc, I'd like to get deeper insight into my intrapsychic conflicts, right? That never happens. Patients come to us because they're suffering. So find out what they're suffering from. So always begin therapy by asking, what is the problem you'd like me to help you with? Now, in response, some patients will give you a clear example which you can explore. But many patients respond with defenses instead. They're detours. And unless you know how to recognize and address those defenses, you won't get a clear idea of the patient's problem, and the therapy will just remain stuck. In other words, a therapy may get into trouble within only a few minutes in the first session because we don't get a clear sense of what the patient wants help with. So here's another key point. We need certain key ingredients to co-create this relationship for change. But if the patient presents defenses instead of a presenting problem, his defenses will prevent him from co-creating with us a relationship for change. He wants to change, but his defenses will work against him. That's why he needs our help, so that together with him, we can help him get the change he wants. So to co-create that relationship for change, first we have to find out what his problem is for which he seeks help, and we have to help him see and turn against defenses that could defeat his efforts. So let's take a look at a few common defenses patients use to avoid declaring what they want help with. When you ask the patient what he'd like your help with, he may answer, well, you should ask my wife. He claims he doesn't know why he got into a car, drove to rebuilding, and entered your office. He claims that only his wife knows why he did that. This is the defense of projection. He has a problem that led him to seek therapy, but he attributes his knowledge of a problem and his desire for help to his wife. If you explore what his wife thinks, you'll reinforce the patient's projection. The therapy will be about his wife instead of about his problem. It'll be about what she thinks instead of what he thinks. So instead, block the projection and keep the focus on the first step of the therapeutic alliance, the problem that he wants help with. So when he says, you should ask my wife, block the projection and respond, well, since she's not here, I can't help her. So I wonder what the problem is you would like me to help you with. Always focus on what the patient thinks his problem is. Never explore what other people think his problem is. Now, 
Another common obstacle to forming a therapeutic alliance is the defense of vagueness. Suppose you ask, what's the problem you'd like me to help you with? And the patient responds, that's not a specific problem really, it's more of an in general kind of a problem. Such a vague response makes it really impossible for you to know what the problem is you could help the patient with. This defensive vagueness keeps you from understanding the patient in any clear or useful way. If you ask him to describe this in general kind of a problem, the patient will remain general and vague. The patient will keep using his defense of vagueness and the two of you will get lost without a clear therapeutic focus. So to establish a therapeutic alliance, label the defense of vagueness and encourage the patient to be more specific. After all, if you don't know what his problem is, you won't be able to help him with it. So when he responds, it's not a specific problem, really. It's more of an in general problem, maybe a kind of midlife crisis. You might say, well, in general kind of a problem is vague. See, if you remain vague, we can't get a clear picture of your problem, and we won't be able to help you. So could you be more specific about the problem you'd like me to help you with? If the patient remains vague for a few minutes, keep pointing out his vagueness and encourage him to be more specific until he declares a clear problem for which he seeks help. With that clear problem declared, you will have accomplished the first step in establishing a therapeutic alliance. But let's suppose, for a moment, after all these interventions, that the patient is still hesitant to let you know what he wants help with. He may avoid declaring a problem through another defense, sitting on the defense, or indecision. Let's suppose you've just said to him, see this vagueness will prevent the two of us from getting a clear picture of your problems. So could you be more specific about the problem you'd like me to help you with? He might respond, there could be a problem about money. He's not declared that he has a problem about money. He said he could have a problem about money. In other words, he's offered a hypothetical problem. But of course, we're not interested in a hypothetical problem the patient could have. We're interested in a real problem the patient does have. Don't explore a hypothetical problem that may or may not be real for the patient. Instead, label his defense of indecision and encourage the patient to declare a clear problem he wants help with. For instance, you might respond, you say you could have a problem with money. Either you do or you don't. Which, which is it, in, in your opinion? Invite him to take a stand rather than sit on the fence. Otherwise, the very existence of a problem will remain undeclared, in limbo. Once he gets off the fence and declares that he has a problem for which he wants your help, you will have accomplished the first step in developing a therapeutic alliance. Now, we have just looked at only a few of the obstacles that can prevent you from establishing a therapeutic alliance. If you want some more answers and interventions to make you even more effective, click on the subscribe button below. This will bring you another free video with more interventions and a free podcast of skill building exercises you can use to increase your intervention skills. In the meantime, I'm John Fredrickson, and thanks for visiting us here at the ISTDB Institute. See you in a few minutes on our next video.